for the GMTK game gym we tried something a little crazy this time around. We were a team of four and we all separately started working on different games. And then after a few hours we joined forces to join all of our game ideas together into one. A perfect fit because the topic of this year's GMTK game gym was joined together. We only had 48 hours to make a complete game from scratch and the clock was ticking. We agreed that each of us would work on something for three hours without showing it to the others. I made a prototype of an Inception-like ball rolling game where you can control a ball with a ball that controls yet another ball. Bonicle made some 3D models for a Halloween theme game. game. River made a system for sticking objects together when they touch. Oh no, oh no. And Yen made a dynamic music system for yet another game idea he had. Um, oh, it's 12 already. <laughs> Uh, so I made a ghost at first. Oh, nice. All right, all right, yeah. all right. I Sorry. made some glue. Uh, <laughs> it is really random stuff. Oh, wow. I'm nervously anxious and excited about seeing what Jonas made. <laughs> I, I wanted to make something very simple, so I basically just made a, a marble game where you can roll around. But now it gets um, a little weird. So basically okay. you have these four buttons here. And with these four buttons, you can control the other marble. I what? like the bounce on oh. that screen effect. Other marble, oh no. <laughs> what was that sound? Obviously there's more. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> what? No. Oh, and the only one that you control directly is... <laughs> oh no. So, I made a script which causes things to stick together. And then mm -hmm. I made another script which uh, makes it so that things are forced uh, to like unstick in certain areas. So the red ones are stuck together. Yeah, so when they're in the green area, uh, they stick together. And if I, I could just drag this over here, then they'll unstick. And, oh, okay. I like it. It's going to be interesting to try <laughs> and put that together with what uh, uh -huh. Jonas has and also with what I have. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's a music system that I made specifically for my game idea, <laughs> which we're not going to use. So we have to repurpose the music system for this. You have a three wheeled vehicle and mm -hmm. you can, in the environment, in the level, get to different parts of the level to get different wheels. Yeah. So Yen created a like scoping nightmare. <laughs> oh, gonna be fun. This is gonna be interesting. <laughs> now the main challenge was to combine all of our ideas into one, if that was even possible. Here's what this makes me think. The most obvious relationship is that these wheels become uh, Jonas' balls. Maybe we can make it so that depending on where you go with the first one, you wind up controlling a different one. I managed to repurpose my button to make sure it can open a door when you press it. Woo, open, woo, close. Then I made sure the camera can move into a fixed position as well instead of following the player around. The others wanted me to make a proper player character, so I had to rewrite some stuff to make that work. On the plus side, it definitely made the game a bit easier to control. Making the character rotate correctly wasn't too difficult, but making the character rotate smoothly Smoothly, that's what kills me every single time. It's not rotating correctly. Just rotate in the correct direction, you dumb piece of crap. Okay, now I can sing. I just had to restart Unity. Of course we had some collab problems as well, <laughs> or at the very least that's what we thought. I need to have Blender installed to work with Unity? I don't have yeah. any Blender installed. What is this garbage? Reviews FBX, come on, that's stupid. Um, what I'm showing is I'm oh, wow. some of Bonicle's graphics here. Ooh. Nice. I love it. This is how the game looked like Saturday evening. So we had about 20 hours left at this point. We still had no clue how our finished game would look like. Stick around till the end of the video to see our finished game. When I tested this for the first time, it felt a little unsatisfying that the bridge didn't react at all when you jump on it. So that was something I personally really wanted to change. Not sure if it was the best call to spend some time on that, but hey, it looks nice. Then I opened up my game Will You Snail just to remind all of you that you should really wishlist it on Steam now. My main activity for the second day ended up being doing a ton of level design, which in 3D turned out to be quite a bit more time consuming than expected. Okay, so apparently the light they basically changed 
nothing visually. Light baking ended up being a little bit of a dead end as well, that was just too much for a small game gem project like this one. After a while the level started getting quite messy with tons of invisible trigger zones, for checkpoints, for the camera, for respawning. I'm sure there are some good solutions for all of that, but I just didn't know how to effectively work with that. I started grouping everything together into different sections so I could unload the old section whenever you go into a new section to save some performance. I had good intentions, but honestly there would have been better things to spend my time on, like finishing the level design as quickly as possible. Oh yeah, the faster transitions already make it a lot better. But how do you like that? Yeah, uh, I, I like that. Like That's... And the thing with that is that it's just so unexpected. When you see that the first time, it's like... What? Yeah. <laughs> I need to get checkpoints working in this section, otherwise I'm gonna go crazy. With my last video I made a parody of all of the stupid mistakes that can happen during game jams, so naturally we wanted to avoid these mistakes this time around, which for the most part we actually managed to do. We didn't crunch, we agreed on a game idea fairly quickly. Maybe if you can actually find each other, then you can get the balls to stick together that you're controlling and just move them as one. Yes, I love that. And we were also quite productive and didn't waste too much time. Why are they poops? <laughs> I'm using the poops as the character locations. But you know how it goes. If you manage to avoid mistakes on one end, they'll just happen somewhere else. Mistake one. We tried out a bit of a more modular code architecture this time around, which felt like the correct call to make in the beginning, but turned out very confusing and hard to debug in the end. I guess I put something together really quickly and rushed, but I think it will work. Mistake 2! We ignored some pretty obvious warning signs. One early warning sign was when River said we shouldn't stick too many objects together or it might become a bit buggy. That turned out to be true even for just two objects. <laughs> Another warning sign was when the others told me my ball game idea would be very hard to control. They were right about that as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I think if you see problems like this coming from a mile away, you should solve them right away instead of 10 minutes before the deadline. That would probably be a good idea. Mistake three. The workflow we chose pretty much forced us to overscope cause we set ourselves the constraint to use absolutely everything we made during the initial three hours, which made it very hard, if not impossible to scale the project down to a reasonable 84 hour scope. That way we unfortunately ran out of time at the end and didn't manage to fix a bunch of pretty crucial bugs. The music is somewhat oh. broken. Yeah, somewhat, yeah. What happened to it? it it's, it's on the first layer and it doesn't change. So how did our finished game look like? Let's say there were a few comments that describe the final state of our game quite well. Uh. I'm sorry, but it's too buggy. I couldn't finish it after 15 minutes and two restarts. I got the apple stuck between the tables, so the game soft locked. The game is not fun or polished. It took me a while to figure out where to go. Besides these, nice game. <laughs> so I'm not making fun of these. Fair enough, I agree. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Woo. Boo, the door ahead is locked. Now here's where the spl first split screen comes in. And the music changes as well. And now I can use the buttons on the ground to control the pumpkin on the right side. Let's go grab the pumpkin. Here it is. There's a switch over here that opens the door. So that's why I need the pumpkin to put that on that switch. Oh no. So actually so far I really like the game. So far th this is the part that is fairly polished, works fairly well. The party starts when everybody is together. Okay, awesome, let's go. It's a Halloween party in space. We need to find the party. Where's the party? Ah! Not down there. And you have to control a different character this time. You have to control the slime. And the slime is a little harder to control already, so slowly ramping up the difficulty. There we go. And this is where the trouble starts. Cause here we have a door, a trap door basically, where you need to have two things on it in order for it to work. You can see the little light lighting up when going onto the door. There are two lights, so that means you need two objects on there. So hopefully players will figure out they can connect to the glue. There's the sticky sound river made. And now if you go with both together on there, this happens. And now the problem is if you fall down, which can definitely happen, the chance of soft locking yourself is very high. Okay, now I managed to soft lock myself, I think. 
obviously I'm a pro at this game, so I do not soft lock myself here. Easy peasy. No, if you. Well, uh, now here we go. Now here's where the really cool section starts. Once again, you have to control a pumpkin. You notice how the music changes when you start controlling the pumpkin. I really like the wobbly effect when when a new split screen comes in, cause now, INCEPTION! Now the pumpkin has to control the glue and I control the pumpkin with the character. So here in this section we made the glue very slow to make sure the controls aren't too difficult. It's still fairly difficult though. Uh oh, I kinda got the glue stuck on a very small border there. Maybe with a little more whoosh! Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, I made it. I think I'm gonna simply grab the glue with the pumpkin now. There we go. Because there's another trapdoor here where you need two objects. Woo! Yeah! We made it to the party. There's the Halloween party. One thing I've still taken away from this is that how you make your game matters. There are so many different ways to make games. You can start with the gameplay. You can start with the music. You can start with the graphics. You can start with the story. You can make games alone. You can make games on a team. You can come up with your own rules. You can make games with your hands. You can make games with your feet. You decide when and how often you ask for feedback. You can listen to feedback. You can ignore it. You decide how to communicate with your teammates. You decide how much planning you do up front, you decide where to look for inspiration and you decide what to do next. There are so many different ways to make games so don't stick to the same boring workflow every single time. How you make your game determines how it will look like before you even get started. There are so many options so keep experimenting and keep innovating. I want to give a quick shout out to the Glitchion team as well because it was very fun to join forces with them for this video. You can find the links to all of our main projects in the description below. Another quick shout out to the Shelfman for editing this video. Video, there's a link to his game dev channel and novel <laughs> in the description as well. See you next time!